I'm in Goku. So his name is um, Olada Koshorinola. He is an expert in this our uh, consulting space, and he does a cross between ERP and analytics. And so you're going to be getting and it's uh, a, another dimension, a cool dimension to most of all these things that we do. So how, you know, from someone from his own background, you know, how do people in his own kind of space use Power BI to achieve a lot of value for companies? And also, more importantly, it's going to open your mind to how you can use, uh, create beautiful reports in Power BI, you know, leveraging the visuals in a lot more interesting and and better way than the one I, I was able to do in most of our sessions. Me, I'm not visually good. So I'm going to introduce him now and call him off stage. So Mr. Dr. Sherinola, the stage is yours. Thank you for obliging to have this session with us. And uh, I know that the entire community, both those who are able to join live and those who will watch afterwards, they're going to pick up a lot of very, very practically insightful and, and applicable skills from your session today. So the floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Michael. Uh, again, my name is Ola Dapo Shuniola, and uh, as we can all see, um, I'm an accountant by background, uh, studied accounting, but along the line, I dived into uh, ERP implementation, and that was when I joined uh, System Specs. I'm sure most of us know Remita, though we don't know System Specs, but we know we know the name Remita. So I started my ERP career with system specs. And, um, you know, when you, when you deal with ERP, uh, you have to, one thing is you have to be very good. Uh, in addition to that, you have to be also very good uh, when it comes to uh, designing reports. So in my, in a bit to designing reports to, you know, clients, uh, satisfying them, meeting their needs, right you you also find yourself designing different dashboards right now these are tools outside uh, microsoft's uh, um, environment you know most of these erp applications comes with their own default uh, report designing tool so all of, all of these times i i learned uh, visualization uh, from you know from the fact that I was an ERP uh, consultant. So I do ERP and also do Excel as well, though uh, the chief in-house, the chief host is, 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 the, is the guru in-house. So I also deliver reports, visualizations using uh, Microsoft Access, and there's another tool called Vision, and of course, SS, RS, uh, SQL Server Reporting Services, for those who know who can use it, and again, Power BI. I, I was telling someone during the week, I said, Power BI seems to be the new COVID now, right? When you well, when you compare uh, the BI tools that you have, top on the list, uh, Tableau, right, uh, with what Power BI is delivering now, it's like Power BI is just disrupting, you know, the entire uh, 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 reporting uh, ecosystem. And uh, that is why most organizations today, you find them, you know, trying to uh, clinch or pitch their tents with uh, Power BI. So I'm going to be uh, running us through a few slides, few slides quickly uh, before we go into the uh, short demo. And uh, along the line, if you have questions, you can just, you know, throw them in. So this is uh, one quote by Stephen Few. Uh, when you talk of Stephen Few, uh, well, sorry, when you talk of visual, visualization, Stephen Few is one of the few Stevens, right, that you need to know as far as visualization is concerned. And what did he say? He said visual communication is only effective when it is aligned with the way people see and think. To work effectively, we must primarily understand people, not computers. So I, I'm going to, you know, I'm uh, emphasizing sorry, the first. Um, yes, I please. Think, uh, from what you said, it was like you showed another screen, right? That that quote was it on your screen? Oh, okay. One one second. There. I think second. Uh, what happened is your entire piece is not shared, so it looks like it's only this uh, web one that is shared. Oh, sorry about so that. Let me just. Uh, 
Yeah. Let me quickly share the entire screen. Yeah. Just a moment. No problem, sir. Yeah. Uh, one second. Sorry, one second. I think I just a moment, please. Files. Uh, one of files. Okay, so I'm going to share the entire screen now. Okay, so is it fine this way? Yes, yes, awesome. Yes, thanks. Okay, okay thank carry you. On. Yes, so like I said, uh, you know, Stephen Few is one of the few Stevens that you need to know when you're talking about visualization. And what did he say? He said, visual communication is only effective when it is aligned with the way people see and think, right? And uh, to work effectively, we must primarily understand people, not computers. You know, just to summarize what he said, if, if you are building any report or any dashboard, you are building, the very first thing is uh, that you need to know, have at the back of your mind is the fact that you are building this report for people and not uh, for computers. Uh, your report must be very simple, People should be able to understand. People should be able to interpret, you know, your report. This is one of, you know, one primary uh, message that Stephen Few is trying to, you know, communicate to us here. And uh, on the second slide, you know, I, I have this uh, talk, topic about who is a data analyst, right? I got to this somewhere and it really, you know, touched me because I, I think this is one of the best definition of who a data analyst is. As a, as a data analyst, you know the data, yes, we all know the data because uh, we analyze the data and all of that. You understand the trends and all of that. You know what's going on, but the reality of the situation is that what you know is very, very relevant, right? As far as people cannot understand that report, then what you know is is of no use. It's uh, is a waste, right? So as a data analyst, your job is to get your findings out in a digestible way for your end users, right? I, I think I should have under, underlined the word digestible way because your report, your dashboard should be meaningful. Should be should be a report that every user should be able to interpret. If users are not able to interpret your report or dashboard, then you haven't really done anything. So the best way to communicate this report to them is to create a dashboard. And this is the caveat. This definition says not just any dashboard. You must uh, strive to create a dashboard that allows the users to interact in a way that your report delivers, you know, delivers meaning delivers meaning or analysis in an interesting way when you are designing dashboard you are primarily telling a story you know turning data into story that is primary that is the primary aim of a dashboard right you must be able to communicate the data to people and people end users must also be able to do what to decode the message you are passing across to them. You know, it's a two-way communication. You are passing information and they should be able to decode, understand, interpret, analyze, digest, you know, engage with that data and for them to also be able to make meaningful decision out of that data. So uh, quickly, what makes a good visualization? A good visualization should establish two aspects of the data being presented. It must show connections within the data that are too complex to explain in words. You know, there are times when, you know, you just find it difficult to pass the message around, but by the time you present it in um, a graphical, you make a graphical presentation of that uh, report, then people would understand. And, you know, this has been scientifically proven that uh, the power of image 
of visualizations of visual on the brain is because is that it helps people remember your reports. It, it makes them uh, uh, make meaningful decision out of that report, right? Let me give you an example. Most of the banks, they do their monthly NPR, monthly profitability reports, meetings. And uh, you can imagine if uh, at the end of the meeting, or during the meeting, I made a presentation for uh, a presentation showing the best performing branch, right, alongside their banking segments. And when I say banking segments, you have high network individuals, you have the medium, uh, small and medium uh, entrepreneurs, you have the large market and all of that. So if you present this data using graphics, and uh, maybe two or three months after that uh, first um, NPR meeting, anyone can easily remember that, oh, it was Lagos Island branch that had the highest score. Why? Because the graph that you presented was able to reflect that. The person might find it difficult to give the actual numbers or the actual figure, right? But the person will tell you that, oh, yes, I remember very well, Lagos Island branch, you know, had the highest score or performed well far above any other branch. This is one of the powers of visuals or image on the brain, right? So in addition to this, a good visualization or visual must show the three S's principle. It must be simple, it must be standard, and it must be scalable. Simple is simple. There is no other way to define it, right? And when you say standard, standard means uh, whatever you are presenting must meet the requirements of your end users. Whoever is going to consume the report, the consumers of the report, it must meet, you know, their requirements. And, you know, talking about scalable, scalability, it is one report that you should be able to develop on, right? Right from where it is, you should be able to improve on it. In summary, a good visual or visualization should be visually appealing. You know, when you look at a report and even without looking at the at the data, it's, it's a report that you should, you know, fall in love with. And I've seen places where people go for demo, ERPs, like, like I said earlier, uh, as an ERP uh, consultant, I go in to bid for uh, you know, to submit bids and all of that. So during demos, I would have, you know, prepared my presentation on slides and all of that. So even on PowerPoint, you know, the way I, people just fall in love, even without looking. And at the end of the day, you see them not even minding the cost because already they've already fallen in love, you know, with your visuals and everything. So it, it speaks, you know, good of you, even ahead of, ahead of their commitment. So it must be scalable. Uh, it gives the user the right information, which is very, very key. Again, as a data analyst, you are passing, the, the communication is two ways, right? When you when you send it out, your end users must be able to do what? To decode the information that you are sending, sending out to them. Then again, it must be accessible, easily accessible. Whatever reports you are designing, whatever um, report or dashboard or visualizations you are presenting to people must be easily accessible. And it allows for rapid development and deployment, which is the scalability in there. So now we have the good and bad. So what makes a bad visualization? Color riot. Too much color or too much information, right? When everything is scattered, there is no scale, there is no alignment. Uh, probably when you should have used uh, a graph and you ended up using a table, uh, when ax axes of neighboring graphs are not aligned, when shadows, shadows may create ambiguity, you know, when you don't use your shadows or backgrounds very well, when it is not readily comprehensible, when information is easy to understand visualization may be unnecessary. I hope you understand that. Then when you have too many pointers, too many annotations, too many 
designs when when you flush it with designs and uh, you know very unnecessary things then it makes a bad visualization when it is not clear to your intended audience when the colors are indistinguishable from each other you can't identify maybe a cream from a brown you can't identif identify maybe a blue from a you know we have all shades of blue you should be able to say Okay, for example, talking about conditional formatting, you, you should be able to say when you have maybe three, uh, three, uh, three ways you want to represent, you have the good, you have the uh, medium, and you have the bad, or so to say. So your good, you want to, you know, use green color to reflect that. Your medium, maybe you want to use amber, and uh, or orange and your bad you want to use red so in between bad and orange you know people cannot identify the color is this one bad is it orange is it red you know it makes for uh bad uh, you know presentation now when your text the text you're using when it is too small people cannot it is not legible people cannot read it uh when they are when your ordering ordering of your reports or dashboard is very, very illogical. Uh, probably you should start with departments. Rather than starting with departments, you are starting with uh, uh, you are starting with staff, you know, staff list and some other stuff like that. Now, one one good thing about visualization is the very first thing is you should understand the data as as a developer yourself or as a builder. You first need to see yourself as a user. You think the way end users will think. Now, if you follow this principle, then you will be able to do what? To deliver well on any report, uh, dashboard, or visualization. But if you don't, if you don't put yourself in end users' position as to how they're going to think, as to how they're going to end up consuming that report, then you will not deliver well. That 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 is the truth. You must be able to first understand any data. You know, any, any, a data analyst, people can push any data to you. Tomorrow, someone can push uh, airline data to you for you to analyze. Uh, to, uh, day after then, someone can push inventory data for you to analyze or COVID-19, you know, health-related data for you to analyze. You must first understand the dynamics of this data. What are the requirements? What and what are the users, end users, looking out for? What do they want to see, right? What are the things? What are the things you should focus on? Should you focus more on on the highs, the high, you know, metrics, or should you focus more on the low metrics, depending on what you are trying to, you know, communicate to the user? Then again, when you mislabel, when you, when when instead of uh, labeling, labeling, labeling it department, you end up labeling it staff. And when people are looking at staff, what they are seeing is they are seeing components of departments, right? That is wrong. That is wrong. When you don't, you know, manage your space very well, uh, when everything is all scattered, you know, when everything is not well, uh, as a matter of fact, what I try to do is, anytime when I'm designing a report, I first carry out a sketch on a plain paper, right? It's not a final document anyway. Like I said, it's a sketch. I, I sketch out, okay, what do I want to be on my right? What do I want to be on my left? Uh, by what metrics or parameters am I filtering? You know, what are my filtering parameters? Uh, you know, what data? How do I present this data? If if what users want to see is a growth, you know, a growth over a period of time, it's better that you use a graph or you use a spark line, right? Rather than using, you know, a pie chart, you know, stuff like that. So you must understand all of these things. Uh, then lastly, when your trends, when you don't, you know, apply them very well, when they don't pop and you know, other stuff, right? So, well, I, I would come back to this visualization resources probably after my short demo, right? But let me go back into uh, this um, 
uh, this uh, Power BI well, dashboard that I, I did sometimes back. And uh, this dashboard was just to bring uh, about um, what led to this dashboard, right? There's a, there's a Power Platform uh, user groups on Telegram, right? Uh, we have almost everyone. So if you are not on that platform, I think uh, you should you should join the platform. Very important. People are there learning Power BI, learning Power Apps, learning you know, Power Automate and uh, virtual agents. You know, so uh, the concept of this just came to me when, you know, I was like, it's very difficult for people to know. People do ask questions, right? But at times, they want to ask they have a question they want to ask, but they don't know who to address it to, or probably they don't know who can really help them, right? As a matter of fact, after I designed this dashboard and I shared it within uh, within the group, someone reached out to me um, from a bank, a Nigerian bank. You know, she was practically looking out for a Power BI uh, developer and uh, to join their team. And, um, you know, she could reach out to me and why did she reach out to me? She she saw this and she was like, oh, she went through everything and it was like, oh, fantastic. You understand what I mean? So it's the, the, the major reason why this, you know, was developed is to create a kind of uh, resource pool where when new people join, they can just go to the link. OK, for example, uh, these are the domain selections you have people in the data analytics environment, you have people who do Excel VBA, you have people who do financial modeling, you have special people, who, you know, you have people who specialize in uh, Microsoft Access, Microsoft Excel, ma machine language and uh, artificial intelligence, Power Apps, and of course, Power Automate. So if you click on each of these, you know, it filters and it tells you the people you can, you know, reach out to and people you can, talk to people who, you know, who have really caught their teeth within the industry and, you know, can really attend to your to your questions. So I, I reached out to most of them, most of the contributors and uh, some other facilitators to, you know, to get their details and uh, they are, most of them obliged. And uh, of course, uh, this is just uh, the history of everything. So I shared this within the group and uh, Mr. Michael was like, oh, this is really, 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 really interesting. And uh, how did you go about, you know, this designing aesthetics, you know, everything is aligned, you know, stuffs and other stuff like that. And I said, okay, no problem. Maybe one day, you know, when you invite me uh, over, you know, I'll just come on board and probably just share, share this with us. Now, what I've done here is... Uh, uh, I've just combined two, two Telegram groups, uh, which are the Power Platform User Group, and uh, secondly, the Nigerian Excel, Excel Users Group on Telegram. Right. So you see that once you click on an individual, the logo changes. And of course, you can see the fonts, sorry, the label header, the background of the label header also changing. So what I've done is I've just, well, I'll take us to Power BI itself, Power BI desktop, so that we can see, you know, how that was, uh, how that was built. Now, to start with, I, I learned some of these tricks online, and uh, I, I really want to also uh, encourage us. Open your mind to learning. Open your mind to learning, right? I learned these tricks from one guy called uh, Raid Heavens. He's nicknamed Wiz, like Wizard, Wiz Viz, as in Wizard Visualization, Wiz Vid. I'm sure some of us will know him, right? But if you Google him, you, you will see him and wonders that this guy has done with uh, Power BI. He specializes mostly on visualizations, right? And uh, most of his works are very, very, very appealing. Without looking at the data, mere looking at the dashboard or reports alone, you fall in love. You fall in love, and you know that's one of the qualities of a good 
uh, visualization, it must be appealing. At the end of the day, when you build a report or a dashboard and it doesn't bring forth any, you know, any any joy to end users, they don't like it, uh, they are not able to, they can't appreciate it, then it's of no value. So you also need to learn how to mix colors, proper and appropriate mixture of colors, aesthetics when it comes to visualization. It is very, very key because it helps you to deliver well on everything that you might have done, right? Yes, it is one thing to, most of us would have probably struggled, you know, trying to, you know, trying to wash or clean our data, especially when the data we're working with is uh, very, very dirty, using a uh, power, power query. Whatever you have done in Power Query, whatever struggles you have gone through, whatever pain you have gone through, would not make any meaning, right? If at the end of the day, you cannot present the reports in good visuals. I hope you understand. So it's not just about, you know, being able to uh, perform a wonderful ETL process and, and, and all of that. You should also learn how to do what? How to present your data at the end of the day. So let me dive into this. Please, if you have any question, you can you can ask. Uh, let me dive into this. Now, the very first thing I did, okay, let me, I think I should just pick them one by one. You see here, I have good afternoon, uh, which is Tuesday, uh, today's date, Tuesday, July 7, 2020. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, can hear you. Yes, can hear you. Okay, thank you. So the very first thing I did was I created a background number, right? Uh, like I said, I have three platforms. I have two platforms, you know, on the two, three groups of people on the platform. I have those who are majorly, who ma major in Excel. I have those who major in both Excel and Power Platform, and I have those who major only in Power Platform, right? So I just defined, I defined, um, what was it called? I defined the measure, right, saying, uh, maybe I should just show us our my table first. This is my table, uh, Microsoft Guru. You can see platform presence. So when they filled the form online, it's an online form, and, uh, you know, online uh, Google form. So automatically, you know, it synchronizes and it updates. So that, that's what I've done. So there is there's a platform presen presence on that form where you signify the group that you belong to. If you are in Nigerian Excel users group or Power Platform group, just, you know, just signify. And uh, you will see that we have those who are in both. We have those who are just in Excel and we have those who are just in Power Platform. So what I now did here was, okay, now, so, okay, let me put this, divide this into three. I have those in Excel representing three. I have those in both representing two. And I have uh, people in just Power Platform representing one. So I used a measure to define that using a selected uh, value to capture, you know, whatever presence you pick within the filter within the filter. So the selected value translates into here. And once it translates into here, I also, you know, converted that further into this. So now my background, I'm now representing it by number to say, uh, this is another measure, right? To say my background number, my background norm equals background number. Don't forget this first one is background number. So I use a switch function to say, if the background number is one, use this color. If the background number is two, use this color. And if the background number is three, use this color. So in here you see I have one, two, three, but one and two are practically the same. Why is one and two same? One and two same because they are both, we have, you know, in, in, in the two, we have Excel users in there. And we also have a Power Platform here. So if you are an Excel user and also on Power Platform, uh, I want the system to return the same color as you know those 
impact platform. So basically, that is what I've done in here, right, to pick out the colors. Now, in picking out these colors, it's very, very simple. Very, very simple to do. When you come to, when you come to, um, for example, let me come here. Let me click on this. Let me click on this, uh, on this visual. Uh, sorry, one second, it's kind of slow. Okay, let me click on this visual. So if you look at this visual now, and I click on this proxy, I can go to, I can go to where you have, yes, of course, there is background. There I, I, I did background, and uh, even the, okay, fine. Now, if you look at the background, what did I do? I used a function. I defined a function, right? One good thing about using measures to define um, your color function is to help you make it dynamic. You know, dynamic in the sense that you would have defined or you would have built a measure where you would have specified what your color palette, everything, everything that you're going to use will have been defined in there. If it is a male, it should be this color. If it is a female, it should be this color. If it is positive, a positive result, it should be this color, green. If it is a negative result, it should be the, it should be a red color, right? You would have defined that. That helps you, you know, that helps you, makes your work faster than you having to be changing, you know, this manually, right? Now, let me clean out this. You see what I'm talking about, right? I just cleaned out this. So if I need to put it manually, I have to come here and, you know, select a green color. Click on the palette and select a green color. But this is what I want to show you. When I click here and I rest, uh, move my mouse across each of those colors, you will see the color code. For example, this is returning as 33A8. A8, right? So which means if I decide to use this color, that is the color code. If I decide to use that color, that is the color code. So that color code is what I just copied out, right? And I used, and I used here. I hope you understand. Now, how did I, how did I put this into the background? So you can do that, you know, dynamically, like I said, by just coming to this uh, function. And when you click on this function, don't forget, like I said, initially I've defined my measure here. My measure to say if the background number is one, it should be this color. If the background number is two, it should be this color. If the background number is three, it should be this color. So I have that, that measure already available. So all I just need to do is go to my background and on this color uh, window, I just click on this function. Once I click on this function, you now click on format by, you use field value, right? Then you come here and then you open your measure and then you just go to whichever measure you have defined. So you can see this background color code. So once I pick this background color code and I click on OK, automatically it changes. And why does it change? It changes because within my measure here, don't forget, within my measure here, I have a selected value, right? A selection, a selected value on platform presence. There are three platform presence. There is Nigerian Excel users, there is Nigerian Excel users and Power Platform. And the third one is Power Platform. So the selected value is, is a filter saying, depending on what you pick, for example, I'm going to pick Ahmed Oyelowo. Uh, let me close this. If I come here to pick Ahmed Oyelowo, now on this Ahmed Oyelowo, the system is going to, the measure is going to filter the platform presence for Ahmed Oyelowo. I hope you understand. And automatically it changes, you know, the color to what? To this, to the color, what should we call this? Uh, let's say this is cream. 
right? It changes this to cream. And if you look around, it changes everything. All the visuals you are seeing here, right, are responsive, response to, you know, as you change or as you filter, you pick any user here, everything here changes. Uh, for example, yes, uh, I'm on both environments, but let's look at uh, Victor Momo. Victor Momo is an Excel guru. So you can see that once I click on his name, right, all these visuals changes color to green. But if I click on, I also have Omishileka in Lubinga, who is also an Excel guru. Uh, yes, it's still green. But if I click on Ola Dako, Ola, everything changes to yellow. Not just everything, including the logo. I hope you understand. Including the logo. And uh, let me explain how I came by this logo. You can just download this logo, you know, online. After downloading the logo online, uh, I there, there was a time, in, as a matter of fact, when I was uh, building this, I had some issues, you know, on how to store my logo. And I think I reached out to Mr. Michael. Mr. Michael, you remember? Yes. Okay, yes, I do. Uh -huh. Yes, I do. Exactly. And you advised that I should use a Microsoft a Blob uh, services on as exactly on Azure. Now there are several options, but uh, for me, I think this is very very good, right? It, it makes everything very simple for you. And how did I do this? I think I should also show us. Uh, let me go back to my table, and there's a table where I have, uh, I think, logo. Okay. I'm going to show us quickly, I'm going to show us how uh, this changes, these pictures, and also this logo. Now, when users filled the form online, of course, I asked them, I requested them to upload their pictures, which they did. So after uploading their pictures, I created, um, I created, a, I created, uh, one second, let me show us, visualization. So I created for most of my project, I created a folder. So I created a folder here. And within that folder, I, you know, I dumped their picture here. I hope you can see that. So after dumping that picture here, so what I then did was I went to uh, register with uh, Microsoft Azure. And uh, Azure has this free, uh, they have this free, uh, products that when you join them, I think it's free for the first uh, 12 months. And again, you pay is 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 a pay as you use, you know, environment. So within that environment, you are able to store data, not just pictures. You are able to store anything, and you are able to call that data or that item, picture, video. You are able to call it out from anywhere any location. So that is what I, I did. So if if I click on this upload, for example, uh, it takes me here and I can easily come, I can easily come here to my Power BI folder where I store their data, Microsoft Power Platform. Uh, then I copy, I copy all of this and I just click on open. So when I do that, automatically it uploads uh, okay, so when I do that, it automatically uploads to this environment. So when it uploads to this environment, there's a way by which you can copy, you can copy this data, right? There's a way by which you can copy this data. And by the time you copy this data, the link, let me just show us the link here. Let me come back here. Uh, this is my table. Now, if you look at if you look at this picture, if you look at this web image, right, you will see HPPS, HTTPS, OU accounting you know, for blob core windows, which is the URL. You can see this OU picture upload, which is the same URL. Can you see this OU picture upload? So this is the same environment. So you can easily copy, you know, you can easily copy that URL. Once you copy that URL, you bring it into your Power BI, right? You create a colon, 
you bring it into your Power BI just like this, right, in quotes. Now, why is it, or how did I do it, such that when I click on the user, you know, it changes and uploads the, user, the person's, uh, uh, when I click on the, the profile of a person, it uploads the person's uh, passport or picture. It's just very simple. Now, there is a colon within this table called Microsoft Guru's name, right? And if you come here, this is it. These are the names of, you know, the Guru that we have on board currently. So what you just have to ensure that you save each name. You save each picture with the name of the person. I hope you understand. You have to follow that principle. Otherwise, it would not you know, show when you call the profile. And again, if you are using JPEG, stay with JPEG. If you are using PNG, stay with PNG. You just have to use one. Why did I say so? I said so because it's going to be dynamic. You know, by the time you start running it, it's going to be dynamic. So at the end of the day, here, if I click on this now, on this web image, so what I did was I just concatenated the URL for that upload path with the user's name. And I said dot PNG, right? If it is going to be uh, any other format, those dot that format same format you know by which you saved uh the pictures you can see i use jp jpeg all through so if you are using png ensure that it is you know carrying that same extension so after doing that right the next thing you do is you need to uh classify this web image as what as an image URL. You need to change it, the data category, change it to what? To an image URL. If you don't change it to, a, to an image URL, the picture will not show. The picture will not show. So that was what I did for uh, for each of these, the pictures for each of these uh, users here. And for this, uh, for this logo, there is a logo table. Rather than doing a logo table, all I did was I just created I just created um, a measure, and in the measure I passed, of course, again, I uploaded the logo to that same environment, right? And I copied out the path for each logo. And again, I also use background number to say, if the user, if the background number is one, use Power Platform logo, which is this. If the background number is two, use uh, Nigerian Excel users logo. You know, if the background number is two, use Power Platform logo. Now, if you remember what I defined here, talking about the logo numbers, right, then you will understand the logo code. So that was what I did. So as you change, as you change, you know, switch profiles from one guru to another, the logo also changes. Now, let's quickly see that. Let's quickly see that. So this is uh, myself. Let's click on Victor Momo, who is an Excel guru. So you see that in addition to this logo, the picture changing, you also find out that the logo also was changes, right? So uh, that is that is about that. Then again, you notice here that where we have this Nigerian platform gurus, you can also see some icons in there. You know, we are talking about gurus. You know, I just picked on those icons to represent, you, you understand what I mean, to to add, you know, color to that to that name. So the, you have a cap there. You have a 100 cent mark. You have like a star. These are stars. These are gurus. And again, these are award winners. Uh, some, of, some of the people here are MVPs. Get what I mean? So how did I do this? Again, I learned this from RAID, the WizViz, and uh, here I defined a measure called title. Right, I defined a measure called title. Now, in Power BI or within Power Query, you have a function called 
Unichar, right? Where pictures or images are represented by numbers, where function or images are represented by numbers. Uh, now, and let me quickly, let me share uh, the link with you. In just one second. Let me share the link with us. Just for us to see uh, what I'm talking about. You will see it down here. Um, Junita, just one second. Junita. Uh, Okay, fantastic. So this is it. Unita course. Oops, sorry. So this is it. I, I want to open this URL up and I want us to see what I'm talking about. So I drop this here. So it's coming up. <clears throat> okay, fine. So it's up. Now you can, depending on what you are building, for example, uh, if you are building uh, um, it could be stock, it could be inventory, uh, it could be anything, it could be anything, right? So using this is just to add uh, color, add beauty, you know, to, to the report. So let me show you where I picked all of those things from. So you can see all of these things here. You can see all of, it, there, are some, there are some conditional formatting uh, pictures or images that you would want to use, but you won't find them within Power BI Desktop, right? So I'm saying you can, you know, easily use Unichar to to bring them in. For example, uh, look at if you're trying to, you know, do anything relating to maybe sex, uh, gender, right, or anything. Sorry, let me scroll down so you understand. Almost all the functions are here. Almost all the mathematical operations, whatever you want to do, everything are here. Uh, let me just scroll down so that we can see, so that we can we can see. Okay, so we are here. Now, if you want to do anything, okay, look at this and this finger saying left, right, up, sideways or downwards. You can just easily come here, copy this number, and you know, put it inside, inside your, inside your Power BI uh, visual. Let's go down. Let's see more. Okay, look at this. This is a, you know, this is a, a plus a pass sign, and this is a an aeroplane. Well, I, I use this on another uh, uh, dashboard. I'll probably show us if I still have, if I have time. So. Let me, there are more pictures here, more pictures here that you can use. So this is where I copied out. So I just want to, you to see where, okay, look at this. Can you see this? So this is, this is the, can you see this? Right, so this is one of them. One, two, seven, nine, four, one. One, two, seven, nine, four, one. Which is this? Medal. Can you see it? Medal. So I just created a measure and I, you know, defined each of those uh, each of those uh, uh, pictures or images that I want to use. I just put them in there, right? And at the end of the day, I had, you know, I just returned this name, concatenated it with each of these measures that I've defined. You know, I, the, you can see the arrangement, the graduation cap before the rating, before the star, before the medal, right? And, you know, that is what you have here. That is what you have here, right? So the same way uh, here shows 10 people have registered. So you can see this small building showing house, you know, kind of. And uh, within these 10 people, we have nine males and uh, just one female, right? So you can see the logo for the male and the logo for, for the female. So you can use Junicha. I, I doubt it if you have this, any visual, like this within Power BI, within Power BI conditional formatting environment. <clears throat> I doubt it if you have anything like that. So you can easily use visuals, right, to bring this in. So for these gurus, I defined 
a, a measure called registered members. And if you look at it, I have here 127968, which is the uni char. That's the code for that house. That's the code for the house. So that is what I've just done here, basically, right? And uh, that was how I was able to, you know, I was able to design this uh, dashboard, so to say. Then again, if you notice, there's a, um, there is background, there is shadow, there is shadow on each of the visuals. And again, you can easily click on any of these links. You know, for those who have link, uh, LinkedIn uh, profiles, they provided their LinkedIn profiles. And uh, let me just show us what I did quickly with that. Uh, on my table, I have LinkedIn. So you can see LinkedIn profile for each uh, person. So, but for you to be able to view that as a web, Within micros, uh, within Power BI environment, you need to change this get data category to what? To a web URL. So when you be bring it in as a web URL, uh, I was only able to represent this in a table, right? Because in a table, you can easily change anything to icon in a table. So within this environment, I was able to, you know, use icon. I was able to use icon, and that is why we are seeing this URL icon. This is the URL icon, right? I'm not sure if we have any visual that you can use URL icon within it. Uh, I'm not sure yet. But if you use table, table uh, filters or table visual, then you'll be able to convert anything to any URL. You'll be able to convert it into a URL icon. So that was a, how I was able to. I was able to do that. So, in, in summary, uh, it's a combination of colors, uh, combination of images, right, and uh, a few. How should I put it? Understanding of graphics. That okay. How do I arrange this? Or you know, the layout. You need to be able to, you know, define the layout in such a way that. Im imagine if if I click on a button of Sherif Udin, for example, here, and rather than, rather for the page or the image show here, the image is showing here, you know, when it is not well aligned, you understand what I mean? So easily, anybody looking at this would easily pick any information he or she needs, right? And again, you can see the flow. You can see the flow from the picture. You can see the arrangement from the picture to the name, to the domain. This is what this person specializes in. To the platform where he belongs. This is his LinkedIn profile. This is his company URL. This is his Twitter handle. This is his YouTube, you know, YouTube link. And uh, this is his profile, right? Then again, I also uh, added something recently, uh, which is a uh, find MVP. Find MVP. Okay, I think I didn't publish it in there. Find MVP. So if you click on this find M MVP link, it, it takes you to it takes you to the MVP page of uh, filtered by Nigeria, right? So you see all Microsoft valuable players in Nigeria on that page, right? So so. It's just a platform where I have, I'm not sure if there's any other information that uh, people would need. At least if you can reach out to the person, okay, well, the phone number is not there, right? But if you can reach out to the person on uh, his professional link, LinkedIn page or his or Twitter handle, or you go to the person's company, or you go to the person's uh, YouTube page, I'm sure you would you'd be able to get across to, to the person. So this is how I was able to deliver on this. So uh, this is about this. So if you wouldn't mind me showing you just one more, uh, one more thing. One more thing, okay. I have my project in here. So I'm going to show us, um, okay, let's look at, let's look at, okay, let's look at Airport US. Airport US.
This is the first page. Okay, so this is something just very, I was just, you know, trying to play around with uh, one data that someone shared with me, right? Uh, the data is a, a US, all the US airports, yeah, all the airports in the US, uh, their flight details for a particular month in 2019. I think that was just January 2019. So in that report or in that data, you have the total flights, you have all the, you know, airports, uh, cancelled flights, you have uh, delayed departures, you have uh, delayed arrivals, you know, you have all sorts of information uh, up to, you know, customers' feedback, uh, are you happy? If you are happy with a service, uh, you click a yes or you give them a five-star rating, four-star rating, all of them, all of them. Then you also have uh, flight departure and arrival time, right? Uh, this visual is just a um, scroller. There's a visual called scroller. That is what I, what I used to do this. Then there's another new visual, you know, that's tweaks on the page, that rolls on the page, you understand? So I was just trying to create something similar to what you see at airports, right? When you when you go to an airport, for example, you see uh, flight signages, you know, all around, uh, telling you flight so-so-so will be landing by 10 o'clock, this flight will be taking off by, you know, 3 o'clock, if you are going to Vietnam, you go to gate D. If you are going to Atlanta, you go to gate E. That's your boarding gate, you know, all information like that. So just like I was, I tried to explain at the beginning of uh, this session, the very first thing you do is you try to understand that data. Now, at the end of the day, your presentation style would also matter, you know, and that is what, and that is the only reason, or the only way by which the consumers would appreciate your uh, report. I, I'm sure using this thing is very, very nice. This scroller, because when you go to airport, you see something like this: scrollers on signages sh showing you when a flight is, you know, landing or when a flight is uh, being delayed. So when you look at the scroller or the, uh, the signage, oh, you quickly, oh, my flight is taking off this particular time. So I was just like, OK, what can I use, you know, to rep to to create a very similitude, you know, to replicate that environment? So anybody looking at this will probably think he or she is at the airport. So I also use the um, the airplane or aircraft uh, unitar code, right? So you can see the plane. So these are the total flights, uh, total airports, cancelled flights. You know, I couldn't find a logo with, you know, uh, a plane and, you know, a cancelled mark. I couldn't find that. So I just used this. And uh, departure delays. So I, I found this and I just, okay, let me use this like a warning sign, you know, telling people your flight will be delayed or your however will be will be delayed so again going to the second page on the second page well you see some other information in there but just like i said initially your presentation matters then again if you notice at the background you can see uh you can see you can see one hangar a plane parked at the hangar at the background there's a way you can, you know, bring this in into into Power BI. I think I can quickly show us that, if you wouldn't mind, um, because it's also part of visualization, right? Probably if you want to show the company's logo, uh, the company's products, you know, showing at the background of of uh, of the dashboard or report, you can easily bring that in. And how do you do that, right? Definitely, you would have saved that uh, logo somewhere, right? You would have saved the logo somewhere. Uh, this particular one, um, airport. If you look here, you see airports, then you can see the different logos that I have here. So let me just bring one in, for example. So on your, on your page here, right, you can click on uh, the format button, then you go to page background. So on your page background, you will see add image, add image. So I'm going to click this 
and then I'm going to go to navigate to where I have airport. And uh, let me just pick one. Uh, let me pick this, right? And I click on open. So you will notice that after clicking open, nothing happens. The play page is still, you know, blank. So what you do is you have to, you know, reduce this variation. You have to reduce the transparency, right? And what this does is it helps you to lighten, you know, the color. Because if you leave it, leave it as dark as this, it might interfere with the report that you are presenting to people. Then that would be nice. So what you can do is you can increase the transparency. You can make it light, so light that even with your data, people will still, you know, see what you have at the background. And again, you need to adjust this to fill, you know, kind of either fit or fill, depending on how you want your uh, layout to be, right? So you can always adjust this to your test. If you want, maybe you want this to be your landing page, report landing page. If this is going to be your report landing page, yeah, probably you leave it a little bit darker, right? But in subsequent pages, you make sure it is very light such that the image doesn't interfere uh, with your with your report or with your dashboard. Uh, so I, I think I think that is about it. And uh, thank you for thank you for listening. Thank you, everyone. We there are questions. Yeah. Here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Iseolua Oluko is asking that um, the shadows in your presentation. So you know the other one, the one on the Microsoft Gurus. So the okay. visuals, you know, the shadow effect. So she wants you to show her. Uh, so I want you to answer. Yeah, see here we go. Okay, this one. Okay, you mean this, right? Yes. 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 Okay. So on on your visual, you can click on your visual, and uh, once you click on the visual, uh, I'm not sure why this is is a little bit slow. Okay. Okay. Hold on one, one second, please. Okay, fine. Now, when you click on this visual, if you go to the prop properties, you go down and you will see shadow. Can you see shadow? You can turn it off or turn it on. Now, when you turn it off or on, when it is on, you can choose your color. You can choose your color. Now, again, I can make this dynamic, right? Remember the measure I created earlier? I can make this dynamic to use rather than make it manual i can make it dynamic to use my background color code so which means okay fine you can see that so i've just made it dynamic so when i change to victor momo you see that it's going to be green can you see that right so if you want to do that just click on the visual go to the properties and go to shadow shadow so that is it Okay, so um, we also want to ask uh, two questions. So I noticed you talked about there, there's one or two places that I didn't talk about. That I said, let me just interrupt here. Let me ask you. Okay. So the picture's changing. Uh, yes. Most people know how to bring in picture via just the insert and bring in a picture. But that okay. one will not, uh, will not create this dynamic one. So uh, I don't know if you want to uh, share about that one, the dynamic picture changing. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, if you want to make it dynamic. Now, if, if I understand the question very well, you can insert image, right? You can insert image, uh, go to uh, RBI. You can insert image. Um, one second. Uh, sorry, visualization. Just I want to bring in one image so that we can see. Okay, pictures. So I'm using your picture, Mr. Michael. So you can insert image. Now I've just inserted this. Now this is going to be static. I hope you understand. It's going to be 
static, or maybe there is a way uh, you can make it dynamic, right? Which I haven't really used, right? But like I said, there are several ways by which you can uh, also make it dynamic. As a matter of fact, one other way that I saw was that uh, the guy the guy saved all the pictures in a folder, right? And they used one other code, you know, hash, some hash codes or some other formats, converting the pictures they, to... They call it a binary. I think exactly. Only the, the, yeah. Exactly. Converting the pictures to binary formats, right? And you know, kind of, you know, tweaking, you know, it within the system. And yes, it was dynamic. But for me, using this, uploading them to this environment was way, way far, far easier for me. And again, like I said, this is good because it's not just about pictures. You can store anything in there and you can assess it from anywhere. I hope you understand. But the other one, storing it as binary format, you can only assess it. <clears throat> you can only call it within your system, within your environment. And once you deploy, you know, the pictures can would only be, you only be able to see it on your Power BI service. But you cannot call, assess that picture from outside your system. That is the point I'm trying to make. So that was why I used this uh, blob service. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So it is a pay as you use, you know, um, environment. The visual, the visual you used on the dashboard was now which one? Uh, which one? So the visual that you tied the picture to. This one? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. So what I did was I downloaded an image visual. You can see image viewer from uh, from uh, the app store. There's a Power BI app source. So what I did was I went in there and I downloaded uh, an image visual. So I think it's coming up. Get more visual. Okay, from this Power BI Visual as an app source. So once you type image in here, right, it pops up and gives you all sorts of visuals, image visuals that you can use. So I I selected this and uh, it really gave me what I what I needed, right? Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, the field for this on my table, your field on your table, you must change the data type or data category to a web a image, you know, URL for it to show. Image URL for it to show. If you don't change it to image URL, it will not show. Uh, it will not show. The other one that you didn't just mention, the last one where it shows the petroleum engineer and what writes about the description of the person, like the profile of the person. So you know, yeah, the yeah, that part. You know, most people naturally they'll be like, Oh, I'm going to use a text box. Or well, again, a text okay. box is not going to be dynamic. Then yes, some yes. people will be like, I'm going to use a card. But the card yeah. will not write it like a text box. <laughs> so yes. you know, what was the trick you used uh, for that particular one too? Okay, so what I did was I used uh, this. Uh, I actually used CAD, right? Oh. And uh, I, after using CAD, there is a function here that, that is called Word Wrap. Word Wrap. So if I if I turn this off, you know, it scatters the text. I hope you can see. So the yeah. text will lose. You know, it won't be well formatted. But if you turn up your Word Wrap, then it helps you to arrange. You know to arrange the data in a readable readable format yes there are other visuals that you can use uh, again if you come to the app source there are some text text some text uh, visuals that you can use but i i was much more comfortable using uh, using that um, card card visual it gave me what i needed yeah. I don't know if any other questions from people in the house before we say 
before we say end of today's session, it's been a very insightful one. Let me just read out what some people have been saying. So, Okibe Asa says, wow, thanks a lot. So, I guess, you know, it's really, really gained a lot from me. And uh, a lot of people, even those who have not mentioned, I can notice that people stay to the end. We have a lot more people. Before, in some other sessions, other people come in, they would drop out, come in and drop out. But this year's session, people came in and stayed in. <laughs> so it was only at the end that people started going. So, but they okay. knew it was at the end. And so, yeah, thanks yeah. a lot. It was a very Thank great you. session. I've also seen a couple of new things. And so yeah. I'm going to also, uh, like for me, to be sincere, I struggled a lot with, with this. Um, with the design path. So what I used to do is uh, what I used to before I used to do PowerPoint. So in learning to okay. do PowerPoint, I there were some tricks I picked up, there were some interesting things. I used to even design PowerPoint deck for people. I do investment fee check. I used to yes, do yes. so it was not easy, but I paid, I bought stuff, I so it we created it made after those struggles, those sorts of learning, I now yes. became Kind of very good that people were like, wow, Michael, you can do this. So what I now do is mm. I now try to carry that knowledge into um, Power BI. But you know, okay. PowerPoint things are always static. The effects are more with animations and transitions, and then maybe just some, some, something, something, some, something like this. Uh, yeah, some of those, and then there are some other okay. things that come also with, with, with PowerPoint that okay. on on and Power BI. You yeah. have to again still have to learn the right. So those who do a lot of Excel dashboard, uh, yes, yes. The, the the dynamic part. So again, I made some part of that. But to be sincere, when something is your weak point, color is my weak point. <laughs> and so, but this is I've learned a lot. I've watched some couple of other videos of some people who have their own strong point. And so yeah. hopefully. Uh, my own report too will start looking great. Someone is saying, Dominic is saying, for a Power BI beginner, where do you advise to start from? For for what? He's saying for a Power BI beginner, he's asking you, for a Power BI beginner, where do you advise the person to start from? Uh, well, I, I think the very first thing is understand the data, right? If you don't understand the data, you won't know you won't know how to present it. You need to first understand the data because that would inform, you know, that would help you to determine, in fact, your layout, your, your presentation. So learn to understand the data first. Uh, what kind of data is it? Um, is it uh, a co Okay, for example, let's talk about COVID-19 uh, using Nigeria as a case study. What would you want to show? Definitely, you want to show number of affected people, right? You want to show number of people uh, who are who have been discharged. You want to show number of deaths. I hope you understand. You want to show you want to show several things, right? So you need to you need to understand that data, which is, in fact, that's the very first thing. That's the very first thing. Understand the data, and uh, once you understand the data. Uh, then you also learn on how to interpret that data. So those, those I'll, I'll say understand the data first. Right. Okay. So once again, thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you. Okay, so Francis is saying, who is a power hey, Michael. Okay, yeah. Please carry on. Hello. Good yeah. evening. Hello. Evening. Yes, good evening. This is Michael. This is Samuel. Okay. Yeah, good evening, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I enjoyed every part of the... I, I was trying to send a message, but he's, he's showing me from my end that uh, administrator disabled the uh, chat for, for this user. I don't know why. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, I don't even know why that can be happening to you. Because I can feel that people's message is sorry about that. Uh, I so that be okay. So, so the question I want to ask is, uh, um, I I enjoyed every bit of uh, the the training this uh, this evening. I, I just want to ask, just as you said last okay. week, this the recording will it be made available for those on the on the network as well? 
Yeah, so let me grab you. Though again, I still need to keep apologizing that I'm always a bit behind in posting it because of the editing. But I'm hoping to repent <laughs> this time and <laughs> and try and dedicate some couple of days this week to push out everything. I've even started downloading the ones I've not downloaded. So please just make sure make sure you are in this. I'm, doing, I'm posting it. Make sure you are part of the community. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, sorry, I want to ask. So you say somebody is a Power BI developer. So what does that mean? Then secondly, as an accountant, uh, beyond your financial statements, so how else can you use Power BI as an accountant? Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Michael, you want to answer that first? No, I will let you answer it. <laughs> okay. Now, as as an accountant, I'm just trying to call up. Um, call up something so you can see. Now, Power BI is not just for reporting or data visualization, uh, visualization generally, it's not just for accountants, right? Uh, but it's just, uh, I think accountants are just uh, fortunate to be the ones probably using it, you know, the most. But everybody uses uh, Power BI or dashboard or visualization, you know. Look at COVID, for example. Apparently, you know, you have we uh, international websites. If you go to uh, WHO's website, they have this uh, dashboard showing uh, the COVID status for all the countries. I hope you understand. So that is where people, you know, some people get their information from. So it's not, you, I just presented uh, uh, a airport, uh, US airport uh, flights you know, data to us. And it's not just for, account. you can use it to, you know, to tell any story. You can use dashboard, not just in Power BI. Any dashboard, you can use it to tell any story. So it's not just for, it's not just for accountants at all. Not at all. Uh, no, I hope that answers the question. No, no, I think my question, first of all, is who is a Power BI developer and how can okay. accountants use Power BI beyond financial statements? For for designing financial statements, right? Yes. Okay, fine. Now, uh, let me say a power, anybody can be a Power BI developer as long as uh, you know your way around it. I hope you understand. Now, when you say Power BI, I think it's a choice of words, if you ask me. Power BI developer in, in that context, the way it is used now, uh, to me means uh, someone who can build right not necessarily the person writing the m codes not necessarily the person writing the r or the person you know writing the uh, python codes you are not the one building uh, building power bi you know the application itself i hope you understand so if i, I would then say a power bi uh, developer is one is someone who can design a power bi dashboard or report from start to finish and when I say start to finish, I'm sure you know all what you know, all what that entails. Uh, your ETL, your transformation, you know, your data visualization, publishing it to Power BI service, which also includes how do you uh, share that report to consumers? Because you have some reports you wouldn't want some department to see. I hope you understand. In an organization, maybe you want you know HR people to see HR data accountant to see just accounting information, uh, the transport department to see uh, the, you know, car logs, how the cars, their car, their fleets, you know, information, all of that. So it's not just about, just like Mr. Michael said in one of, in one of the sessions, that people dwell most of the time more on Power BI desktop, forgetting the Power BI service uh, environment. So it's not just about the Power BI desktop. You know, Power BI service is also part of Power BI. So a Power BI developer now is someone who can use both environments and deliver on any good visualization. Then as an accountant, uh, if you can see my screen, right, this is a demo data, and uh, I've used Power BI to, to design this, right? Uh, I won't lie to you. For each of the cells that you have here, I defined, uh, what's it called, measures 
for each of the cells that you have there. So I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. So this is over a hundred, you know, over a hundred measures. I hope you understand. So, and uh, this is a financial data. Now, as a Power BI developer, one of the things, if you are designing something like this, I think one of the things you should uh, put in mind is performance, right? Because at the end of the day, which is one of the qualities we talked about, the report must be easily accessible. Imagine if your users click on this and five minutes is still rolling, it's still looping, you understand? So which means you haven't really delivered anything. So performance should also be be part of you know what you think about when you are delivering on any reports. It might be beautiful, it might be lovely, it might be appealing, but you know us users should always be able to do what assess that report easily. So as an accountant, you probably want to use it to define right uh, to show your financial metrics beyond financial metrics. Uh, uh, well, I think any data really. Any data, you know, we have different organizations, and even as an accountant, uh, the industry that you belong to will determine the kind of data that you'll be working with. So you can easily use Power BI to to define anything. If you get what I mean, sir. Right, thank you. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Uh, maybe just to uh, bring in an additional angle too. So right now, too, there's uh, an aspect of Power BI. That that even for me, I am still trying to get drafts of it because maybe partly because of the expenses that goes into setting up here, and not so much clients in Nigeria are wanting to or uh, take up that kind of cost. But there's this Power BI embedded too that is taking yes. a, a deeper programmatic approach to it. You can't even use just only Power BI. You now have to be using Azure, it's the feed. And it has to be so. Your work now has to be matched with an application code. So, but that's yes. when we call them application developer. Yes, uh, yes. So, uh, in some, I don't really, right now in Nigeria. I don't, I don't even know of any company that is using that approach right now. But the cost <laughs> when I calculated for one company that wanted to like, okay, what if the report is embedded inside an already existing app that they had? And you know it made a lot of sense in concept, or even you don't want the you don't want people to have to buy Power BI. They can consume the thing within your own software. It usually makes a lot of sense. But when we calculated the cost, we were like, oh boy, <laughs> it's better you just uh, maybe we found out sanity. That was what they went to. So someone is asking the name of the I think you said Reza, the name of the uh, the with the with Okay, yeah. the whiz, really? the whiz, whiz guy. Okay, his name is Raid, Raid Heavens, Raid That's Heavens, Raid Heavens. Right, and if you, if you, okay, uh, I think I should just let me share his uh, site with us. If you go there, you can, you can subscribe to some of his, um, some of his uh, stuffs, and from there you can learn, you know. You can learn. This is it. So you can you can learn so many things. You can learn so many things, right? Just Google uh, raise uh, Evans or Evans Evans Consulting. You will see it there. So speaking to what Mr. Michael said last, if you look at this site, Eduplana. Eduplana is an educational NGO company in Nigeria, right? I helped them to design this. And what did we do at the end of the day? I just we just passed the code to their uh, site developer and it was embedded on their website, right? So which which is also possible, right? So you have it running uh, on the Power BI service is a choice, but if you want to run it on your website on your intranet, you can just pass the code to your developer and uh, it will be embedded. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Okay. So, uh, I would just want to say a very big thanks to Mr. Dako Shoniola for this amazing session. And uh, you, we wish 
to let you know that maybe in the future you want to share any other things, please, you know, feel free to come again and share any exciting things you want to share with us. Many, uh, just, you know, any other time that you want to share, we will be very, very willing to hear from you again. And so on behalf of everybody, I want to say a very big uh, thank you for the opportunity to learn from your from your visualization expertise and those rules, you know, being able to even give that general framework that helps to set the tone for the right design and the color and the rules to, to, to keep to. They are really, really helpful. And I know a lot of people, especially those who have stayed this long, is because they are getting the value. You see, I didn't even worry about saying time up or something because uh, <laughs> everything you are saying is really on point. So anybody who is tired will just leave but those who are able to continue they would rather continue so thank you very much sir and um so everybody who joined today thanks and thank you for staying this long and we hope to see you again next week and like i said there are so many of us that we are doing things there that uh you it is a good platform for us to share knowledge together so if you are also let me just mention some names i know Francis has shared with us before, but that was in pro impromptu, like I was having a session and he needed to just pop in and show the part about the MySQL. And he also did a girl for us in session before now. I know that um, Babaji Deola Shendi has been joining the session consistently for some time now. Uh, Samuel Odemo is another constant person. So I want to ask from the, all of us that I've mentioned your name, is there anyone who wants to do something next week? You know, again, it doesn't, there's no constraint. There's, as long as it's related to Power BI. Any, let me even look at all the names because there's only some of the names I'm seeing from this stuff. So, okay. Uh, well, Mr. Akunle, Akunle hearing that I can see you, sir. Awesome. Uh, you know, you have been doing a lot, especially for your company, and some of these things are so crazy, the kind of data you get that you have to go and learn things even beyond what some of us know. You go online and Google and, and get some things from some places. You ask some questions sometimes, nobody even knows the answer, and you still have to figure out the answer. So do you want to share some of the amazing things you've been able to do with Power BI, you know, even if it's just on a uh, on a on a demo kind of situation, Mr. Kule. Oh yeah, we are waiting for your answer. Maybe that's pretty early. Okay, so Francis, anything you have for us? Well, yeah, maybe maybe up our week. Maybe up our week because this week will be okay. Maybe up our week I can do. Up our week. Yeah. So, okay, we'll pen you down for up our week then. Uh, Samuel or demo anything for us? Yazid or Badaki? I'm I'm practically new to uh, Power BI, so I'm just trying to pick uh, knowledge. So uh, for now, I I don't have anything to share. But thank you for the great work you are doing. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. So hopefully in three months or two months time, I'll call your name again. Eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, hopefully. Okay. If you look at Kobe, innocent Bilo, Akimumi Bilo, Shagun. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Good evening, Yazid. Yes. Thanks so, a lot for this platform. I just got to find out about this. This is amazing. In fact, oh. I've been a Power BI novice for a while, and I'm trying to really gather my skills in this. So um, I really appreciate that this exists, and I would keep on being here so that someday I would be able to also share what I have gathered. Oh, okay, great, great. I'll follow up on you then. <laughs> thank, thank you, everybody, then. So it looks like I have to go and find a topic for us next week. So I'll <laughs> most like, let me see if anybody has commented on anything. Okay, okay. All right. So thank you very much and stay safe this week. Have a nice, blessed week. And uh, thank you once again. Good night. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, and thank you especially to our guest Goodbye. today, Mr. Dako. It's amazing, you know, awesome session.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the love. I appreciate it.